In a moving ceremony this morning at Sydney's St Mary's Cathedral, the late Cardinal George Pell was laid to rest here in Australia. Joining me now, foreign editor of The Australian, Greg Sheridan. Greg, we'll, we'll get on to all the other international stuff in a moment. I know you knew the Cardinal well. You've written beautifully in recent weeks about your friendship with him and his contribution to not just the Catholic Church globally, but the big debates that shape our society. Give us your reflections on the man and his legacy. Well, Peter, he was a great man. He was a great friend of mine. We used to have some rich and vigorous arguments from time to time because uh, he was uh, he was a very vigorous kind of guy, George. Um, the caricature of him is completely the opposite of the truth. I mean, a point you made, the idea that it, that that Pell had his own teachings or something, that's nonsense. Pell's view on same-sex marriage and all the rest is exactly the same as Francis's view. Francis the other day said, God loves homosexual and gay people and should never be criminalised, but yes, it is a sin, uh, sex outside marriage. Well, that, that was exactly Pell's position, exactly the same. He had a great sense of humour, a great sense of his own foibles. You know, a lot of us thought he might be a candidate for Pope, and he said something like, well, look, you know, a bit of form at a country Australian meeting doesn't mean you're going to have a chance in the Melbourne Cup. And uh, uh, he was also a merciful, pastoral, good man. And uh, the culture wouldn't forgive him for talking back against the culture. In, in the many ways in which he was a historic figure, he will be one of the first people in modern Western society to go to jail for being an Orthodox uh, Christian leader. Uh, and um, I asked John Howard once why he gave him a reference and of course he did so because he believed he was innocent and a good man and so on. But he said to me, he, he went to jail because of who he was, not, not for any other reason. And um, we were lucky to have him. I'm so glad that he was vindicated. If he had died in prison, mm. the world would think he was a guilty man, whereas we know he was completely innocent. And what about the, the protests? No, well, not just the protests, the, the, the unseemly commentary from people like Daniel Andrews where he said he didn't have to weigh in on the issue of a state funeral, but he did it in a, in a really derogatory way. And the protests we saw today. I mean, are we really going to be this sort of country where we protest out the front of funerals? They were always off limits, but, but not for George Pell. Yeah, and I think this has been somewhat encouraged by Daniel Andrews, whose comments on this all the way through have been utterly disgraceful, utterly, utterly disgraceful. When the High Court, uh, first of all, Andrews abused uh, Tony Abbott for going to see Pell, as though you shouldn't go and see your friends when they're in prison. Even if Pell had been guilty, it was quite right for Tony Abbott to go and see him. Then when the, when the High Court decided 7-0 that Pell was innocent, absolutely clear that he was innocent. They only took 24 pages to say this is a ridiculous prosecution. Andrews, I tried very hard for hours to get Andrews' office to say that Andrews respected the verdict. And he wouldn't even say that. He just said, I see the victims and I stand with the victims. And then he said something like, I don't want to get in contempt of the court, so I'm not going to say anything about the court's judgment. And then, of course, you saw a great swag of uh, anti-Catholic vandalism the very next day, for which I think... Uh, Andrews, uh, you know, contributed, un unintentionally, of course, contributed to yeah. that result. And then when Pell died, he said, now remember, abusive priests were moved from parish to parish. That was never done by Pell. As soon as Pell became Archbishop, he took the most forward-leaning move against abusive priests of anyone in the worldwide Catholic Church. So Andrews was defaming Pell even in death. And then that ridiculous comment about a state funeral. This is grubby, nasty, filthy politics. And there is now a sectarian anti-Christian mood in public life. And some people hate Christians and some people just are happy to go along because they think it's politically uh, useful. But I could not possibly more strongly condemn Daniel Andrews for his role in the whole thing. But Daniel Andrews is a pygmy compared to George Pell.